Hey guys, it's the welcome to this video. In this video, we want to talk about a different thing we will not cook. We will cook in the next video. But in this video, I want to talk to you about multi threadings in iOS, about threads in iOS, about queues in iOS. Okay? Maybe these terms it doesn't sound that much of make sense to you, but let's do it in this video and let's break it down what iOS does everything behind the scene. Okay? So here we go. I have a little whiteboard of here to show you some of the stuff that usually we do it in slides, but maybe I want to change it in this case to see how it works. Okay? So if you look at this little um little rectangle on the on this one it says the Instagram app and let's say let's pretend that this is inside this Instagram app we have three um, three statements or three jobs or three tasks that we will need to do the first one is maybe we want to change the text of some label the second one we want to change maybe we want to do something heavier we want to uh, download 50 images we want to download 50 photos from Instagram and then the third one you want to again do something lightweight we want to change the text of a label okay so what and in the right hand side over here it says the iOS execution okay in the right hand side how iOS executes these statements these tasks or these jobs so let's pretend that I am the iOS execution. Let's pretend that we are iOS, the system itself, and how we will um, how we will deal with these comments. Okay. So now, um, let's say I am with this color, and we are the iOS execution. We will read from bottom to top. Okay. We'll read from bottom to top. The first one we will read is the label one. Okay. I hope that you see this arrow, little arrow. Okay. We'll read the labels, okay? So you tell me to change the content, the text of this label, that's good, I will do it like this. I will put this label, we will want to label it or something, okay? We want to put the content, the execution into this iOS execution, okay? After I do that, I will come back to this guy, okay? After I come finish this label thing, I will come back to this guy, and then I will execute this download 50 photos. Okay, so okay, I know I have to download this 50 photos. Photos. Alright? And then I will download 50 photos and I will do whatever you tell me to do. So I will download 50 photos. That's good. I'm done with this 50 photos now. It may take me one minute. It may take me one second. It may take me 50 minutes. Or it will take me forever because you don't have iOS, you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have a cellular network. So this may text me, and to do that I will change this into red. Okay, I should have do it in red so that you can see it clearly. Oops, come on, does it look that good? So let's do it in color. Okay, so this one it may text forever, it may take one second, it may take 10 seconds, it may take one way it wants because it depends on the network, right? It may be a very fast network and Wi-Fi, it may be very slow network or it doesn't have network at all. So when we done with this, we done with downloading 50 photos, we can come back into the, our label. So we will do our label right here, it may take very fast because with this, we do it locally, just change the text of the label. All right, so this makes sense, right? This makes really makes sense. But there's a really, there's a huge problem in this case. There's a huge problem with this kind of execution. And why is it the case that this is a huge problem? Well, when we do this, change the text of this label, it's fine. It's fine that we change the text of this label. It takes immediately it takes really instantly just several lines or 100 lines of content it it's, doesn't take that much the problem lies in this 50 photos when we download these 15 photos okay I, as i tell you it may take forever so what it does is it will 
put the whole execution of the phone and download 50 photos in that time it may be 10 minutes it may be one hour to download 50 photos okay the app will frozen the user interface will frozen the user cannot do anything else okay so that's the problem the user cannot do anything else right and now what happened when you open an app and you type in some code or you type in some username or password and then you hit enter and then it froze well you will wait for three seconds and you see that it doesn't do anything else then you assume that it's crash okay it doesn't have to be throws you to the to the home screen again it requires it can be like this if frozen you can do whatever you want but the user will assumes that this app is frozen and he or she will never come back again and that is the bad way to do now luckily for us luckily for us iOS is very smart iOS is incredibly smart it doesn't do things like this is that it do things differently and let me show you that all right so instead of do things like that it it um, it separates the execution of the system into different threads into different queues it into different kind of prior pre priorities okay so maybe in this case I want to show you just two kinds oh my god so we have two kinds of execution okay the first one we call it the main execution the main queue okay and then the second one is something less prior prioritized so a different queue okay I call that a different queue I hope I spelled right a different queue over here this is the main queue and this is a different queue so what happens is when it reads, it reads the program, it reads the label, and inside the program we have to tell iOS that this executes on the main queue. So it will okay. I do it on the main queue. I will do the label like this on the main queue, and then it will jumps immediately. It will jumps immediately into this one. Download 50 photos. And we know we as a programmer knows that this may take a long time. So this main queue, this main queue, it will just now here's the rule. Here's the rule. This main queue, the only job of this main queue, and it's one and only job is to execute the UI code, things that appears on the screen of the device. Okay? Things appears on the screen of the device. The, its only job is to, to execute things appear on the device so that the, the UI always fluid, always smooth the user can always interact with the device okay so that is the job of the main queue it's do only the UI code okay only the UI code inside this main queue alright so when the system jumps into this download 50 photos as a programmer, we know that this downloading this 50 photos, it may take a long time. So we will tell iOS, we will tell iOS that we want it to execute not on the main queue. We want to tell iOS, we want to execute it on a different queue, on a less prioritized queue. And to do that, we will call that in this queue and iOS will put this job, download 50 photos inside this photos inside this different queues and here's the thing this one it will execute nearly simultaneously okay what it does is it will jump this one jump to this one jump to this one and jump back to the different queue or maybe it will do a bunch of this jump to this okay or if you think about it iOS devices has the chip of iOS devices the CPU has multi cores okay so it will uh, put maybe three cores for the main one core for the um, thing okay I'm not sure about it is it four cores okay or two cores oh we don't have to care about that and luckily we don't have to care about that so why does is this one execute immediately this one it may take time and the re and 
the advantage of when we put this guy into a different queue is we don't have to uh, block the main queue and it means that we don't have to make the user wait for this one complete the UI is always smooth okay after it does this and it will change the label of this label like this okay and this one maybe in the meantime it's still running okay now another thing is maybe I will tell it these things okay so another thing is later on when we want to do in the project after we complete this downloading these 50 images okay and after we complete downloading these images maybe we want we hold a bunch of images in our hand right and it's time for us to come back and tell iOS that we want to show these images okay and if you recall that in our project we have the a collection view of images right we have a collection view of images so that's why uh, we want to populate those images into the collection view but recalling the rule of the game the rule of the game is the main queue is the only thread and executes UI code okay UI code can be executed can be processed on the main queue only so that's why we have to some way tell the iOS tell iOS that we want to execute this one on the main queue we want to jump back to the main queue and to do that we will use something called a grand central dispatch okay and don't worry about that right now in the next video in a minute we'll, I will show you in code how we can do this how we can break it down into different queues okay and the other thing I want to show you is uh, the terms of this kind right if you recall that in the previous um, model we do everything in this queue we do this and we will do that we do that and that thing is called a synchronous method synchronous means that you do everything all at once do this job wait for it complete do this job wait for it complete do the another job okay and this approach we have different queues actually it had tons of queues we don't have to worry about those things we can actually create our own queue but we um, we don't have, actually have to worry about other things okay that's the nice thing about that now this kind of approach is called a asynchronous with an a with an an a like this asynchronous okay okay that's a crappy marker so asynchronous means that you can do a bunch of jobs all at once okay of course in this case again the rule is you do all UI code in the main queue I have to stress it all all again the rule is you have to do all UI UI stuff UI code in the main queue if you uh, and all the things that takes time in other queues in the not a main queue why is that because if you block the main queue if you blo block the main queue iOS has the rule to shut you down it will shut you down okay it will crash your project it will shut you down close your app immediately all right and also uh, if you do not do the UI code in a different queue if you do the UI code in a different queue that is not the main queue very bad thing will happen it will be chose unexpected um, like pr performance for you so you will not want to do that okay what you want is very consistent very efficient performance of your app and that is exactly what we're going to do in the next video so I see you in the next video hey guys is the did you like this tutorial if you did you can do two things now to continue your journey first you can subscribe to my channel right here which I hope you will so that I can continue sending you more tutorials on a weekly basis and second you can join developers academy today start learning iOS development and get your first two weeks free by clicking the link on the screen right now look forward to seeing you in the next video until next time go out there learn new things craft your ideas and contribute to the world